So as far as Genesis chapter 11, I made a mistake i like to correct before we get onto the video. When we get to Genesis chapter 11, verses 27, I said that the God spanked the Terah. And for Terah to move away from the moon city. And the actual calling with Hebrews 11 chapter 8 is the calling was upon Abram. Abram, the son of Terah, persuaded his father and the family that was left to move on. The calling was of Abraham. All those years of, of God's absence from speaking to man shows up to Shep, Shem. Shows up to Enoch who was raptured. Genesis chapter 5. Shows up to Noah. And then God speaking again shows up to Abram while he's in his city of Ur of Chaldees to get out go to the promised land. Terror his father following him with what's left of the family dying in the land of Cana, uh, excuse me, Karen. And you can follow this also with, with Hebrews chapter 11, 8, and then Acts chapter 7 with Stephen. So I was wrong about Terah being called. It's actually Abraham, or well, Abram at this point. We know him as Abraham. God spoke to Abram to go. Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly divine the word of truth you may use our studies but i request that you do not abuse them for youtube videos subscribe below for more videos and place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me thank you genesis chapter 11 the whole earth was of one language and one speech. It was universal. This is where they get the word Catholic. Catholic means universal. One flock. So here, right now, with the earth, with all the people that are on it, they all can understand each other. And you've been in situations where every, wherever you go, You'll find somebody who has a language that they'll speak and you don't know what they're saying. And they don't know what you're saying. This is not, this is not so in chapter 11 verse 1. And they said one to another, Go! Let's go! Okay, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, so they go from Mount Ararat and they go east. And when they get to where they're going, they turn around and they come back west. That they found a plain in the land of Shinar. We saw that in chapter 10. I think Zechariah talks about the land of Shinar. And they dwell there. So they, they go west. I mean, they go east. They stop, and then they come back west. No, the journey from the east, I think, says the point. Yeah, but they have to get there because Mount Ararat, it, when you, to the location we're at, it's east where they are. When they leave Mount Ararat, they go out. Asia Minor they stop and then from the east like the um, the Magi that came from Jesus they came from the east and they end up in Shinar and they dwelt there they make a home and we read that this is where Nimrod has a kingdom and from this kingdom we get Babel 
And they said one to another, Go! Go! The Bible says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. This is not what they're going to do. Go to let us make brick. Now, brick is a man made building block. It's made of mud, it's, it's, it's baked. And burn them thoroughly, which means we're going to bake them, we're going to make sure they're strong. They're so strong that we don't even know where this place is. And they had brick for stone. And slime had they for mortar. Now God's mortar, when it came to the ark, was pitch. They're using a man-made brick and slime. Goo, mud. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower. So let's make the bricks. And it's funny with Nebuchadnezzar, when he makes the, the bricks for his city, they say that his name or his initials are on each one of those bricks. But that's later on. Let us make a city. Well, the first city in the Bible was Enoch of Cain. Of a murderer. Now we've got a universal people getting together. We're going to build a city. And a tower. So, it's religion going up. Thus, this is where you get church buildings with a tower or steeple. And then usually when settlers come to a new land, and they settle down, they will build in that town, that city, a meeting house. One of the first things outside their own houses. That meeting house will be the town hall, the city hall. It will be also the church. And this is what they're doing here now. We're, we found a place to live. Let's build a tower. Let's build a city. Now this tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Let's get to God, to the heavens, without God. There is no God in verse 3 or verse 4. But we want to go to heaven. And we want to do it by our own works, by our own man-made bricks. We're not going to use stone, because God made stone. That may reach, there, that is a doubt or uncertainty. We're going to build this project. We don't know if it's actually going to reach to heaven, but we're going to do it. And this tower they, is used today, like they say, with the pyramids, is to communicate with the spirit world. Towers today are, are filled with electricity, communications, cell phone towers, pyramids. All over the world are called gateways to the gods. Small g. And about the same time you find in different parts of the world that there are pyramids all over the place. And there are pyramids unfinished. So let us make a name. Washington, D.C., Lincoln, Hudson River. Let's call it after our name. And that's one of the things men do with their city. Enoch City, City of Enoch, was named for Cain's son. Nothing new under the sun. So, when this tower, and God's going to call it Babel, I don't know what they're going to call it. But this tower's purpose is that when the world comes by and looks at it, they're going to say, that's them. 
Look at their achievement. As any college or buildings on colleges or hospitals. Name buildings after people, if not the college itself. A title. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. I mean, we want to be together. We don't want to go off to be alone. We're going to make the city and this tower our focal point, our family. And they're doing it without God, with no mention of God at all. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. The eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. God says, I got to step down and go see this. I got to go find out what's going on. And there's another city that God stepped down while speaking to Abraham. He sent two angels into it to find out, is the sin as bad as it's been reported to him? And that's coming to Sodom and Gomorrah. And that story will come soon in Genesis. When God has to step down or send angels to see the condition of the city, that city will be proclaim its wickedness and then God will judge it. The judgment upon this city is we got the worldwide languages. The judgment upon Sodom, Gomorrah and the sister cities thereof, fire and brimstone and destruction. The city of Tyre just completely destroyed twice. See the city and the tower which the children of men build, builded. So they're building. And the Lord said. To who? To himself and to the Holy Spirit. Behold the people is one. Chapter 11 verse 1. They have all one language. And this they begin to do. Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Run that back to 821. God has proclaimed in the evil, wicked imaginations that man has. His capability of doing what he has set his heart to do is free and able to do. Man, in his imagination of his heart, has destroyed other men, and they're doing a very great job of it. Man, in his imag imagination of his wicked heart, is able to bring other men down to nothing. This has been before the flood. This is after the flood. And here we are in a city, a group of people together. God said, listen, they can do it. They are able to build a tower to go to heaven. So what do you say about space travel today? With their launch pads and their towers. God already said they can do it. That's what they want to do. They want to get there without me. And when it comes to the end of life, they'll be found wanting. Oh, we're great. We, we're taking pictures of all these plans. And we're going for no person has ever gone before and thou fool the Lord require your soul tonight you heaped up all kinds of things but you're still found wanting with God go to let us go down God speaking to the Trinity He's gone back to heaven. He has come down to see what they're doing. And he's gone back and said, go to, let us go down. We're going to make another trip back. And this is what we're going to do. And there confound their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. Now what is the purpose of language? 
that you cannot get together and go against God. And when you start bringing languages together and you start learning language arts of other places and other people's tongues, and you do it in the name of science and education and government. And you do it without God, you're bound for a fall. English is the predominant uh, language of the world today. Now there's a way you can use it for God as a missionary who decides, I'm going to go to this particular country and I'm going to learn their language. To proclaim Jesus Christ in the gospel thereof. But when you can sit in a boardroom, or you can sit in the United Nations, or you can sit in the White House or the Kremlin or whatever government building that supports that country, and you can get a group of people around the world and use interpreters and use uh, devices that you can understand that person that you would not understand. You have gone back to Genesis chapter 11. God says, I've got to end this unity. I've got to stop it. Now, according to the Bible, as I've said before, and it is going to wear out now, I cannot tell you when the black man got his black skin. I can tell you the brown skin probably came from Adam. So the white man, I can't tell you when he got his whiteness. But I can tell you at the point where press one for English or for Spanish or for Hebrew or Greek comes upon us, whatever that name of that language is, comes upon us in Genesis chapter 11 so God can separate the people. Again, we have a separation doctrine set by God that man may come to God and not against God. So the Lord scattered them abroad and thence upon the face of all the earth they left off to build the city. So they stopped. And this is a migration that they go all out. They take their language that God has given them and say, go. Can you imagine? We're going to see in verse 9. Can you imagine that moment of the confusion that all of a sudden you are talking to your buddy and now he can't understand you and you cannot understand him no more. You can't read the blueprints for this city. You cannot agree with somebody across the way. It has become death to this building project. And yet maybe the Antichrist will bring the world under one world language. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth, and they left off to build the city. <coughs> so what is the first real miracle of the apostles after the ascension of Jesus Christ? They are in Acts chapter 2, they are in a meeting with Peter, and the Holy Spirit comes down with cloven fire of tongues. And this entire group of people who are speaking other languages, other than the Hebrew language. And they all now understand what's going on by the apostles and tongues. God brings them, he doesn't change the language back to one, but he brings the, that, the knowledge to speak someone else's language. By a miracle, without a tape, without a book, to present Jesus Christ, and people got saved. Now you can get the Bible written in other people's languages. 
So you don't need tongues as a sign anymore. I know personally a missionary, uh, it's been many, many, many years, but I knew missionaries are in places where the Bible is not in the language, and they are presently trying to put the Bible in that present language, where they are. So they can hopefully have a Bible that they can read by their own language. Therefore, is the name of it called Babel? Chapter 10, verse 10, Gentile number, meaning confusion, mass confusion. And yet, even myself, when we complain about having to press one for English, not being able to understand what that waitress is saying to us in a Chinese restaurant. I forget that that is because of God, and God does not want me to understand what they're saying. I forget that. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from then... Did the Lord scatter them aboard upon the face of all the earth? So here is segre segregation set off by God. And the world today is trying to get everyone together. That's not what God intended. You're going against what God meant to do. These are the generations of Shem. Now, let's go back to chapter 5 real quick. Genesis 5. And we, we read through Genesis chapter 5. Let's see 5.31. And all the days of Lamech were 770 and 7 years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, run back to over Genesis 11, 10. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begat a Fartstad two years after the flood. We are picking up where Genesis 5 left off. We are going the line of Jesus Christ now. We went to the table of nations chapter 10. We've already read that. But now we're going to point to the to the one and only Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who will be of the seed of Mary, of David, King of Israel. And we're going to run into one man named Abram, the man of Israel. We are now, chapter 11, we are set forth. From now to the end of Revelation, one particular people called Jews. It begins now. And chapter 12 of Genesis is mastery of what the Jewish race is. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and he begat our facts at two years after the flood. And Shem, Shem lived after he begat our facts at 500 years. And begat sons and daughters. And our facts have lived five and thirty years to begat Selah. Where is and he died? Genesis 5. And he died. He had these children. And he died. And he had this children. And he died. And he had this child. And he not. He walked with God. And God took him. And he had these children. And he died. Because the line of Jesus Christ is light. And when we come to the end of this chapter, we're going to see Satan start attacking these people. Our facts have lived five and thirty years to beget Selah. And our facts have lived after beget Selah four hundred and three years and beget sons and daughters. And Selah lived thirty years to beget Eber. Boy, we're a lot different from what chapter 5 was. The guy lived 400 years and begat a son. The guy lived 600 years and had a son. That 
flood, universal flood, and now we have rain, has done something to the climate. Men are not living the full life expectancy that Adam through Noah were living. And they're starting to dwindle down here. I mean, you got some old timers here still. But that will end. And she that lived, to beget, uh, lived 30 years to beget Eber. We saw him in 1021. She that lived after Eber 430 years to beget sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years and begat Pele. And Eber lived after he begat Pele four hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters. Now when you run over to Genesis ten twenty one, unto Shem also the father of the children of Eber, the brother of Jacob, the elder, even to him the children born, the son of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxad. And Lud and Aram, the children of Aram, Uz and Hu and Gether and Man. And, Af and Arphax had beget Selah, and Selah beget Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons, the name of the one was Pele. For in his days was the earth divided. Jump back over to chapter 11, verse 18, and let's continue. And Pele lived 30 years and beget Ru. Pegai lived after he begat Ru 209 years and begat sons and daughters. And Ru lived two and thirty years and begat Surug. And Ru lived after he begat Surug, Surug 207 years and begat sons and daughters. And Sayar lived thirty years and begat Nahor. And Sayar lived after he begat Nahor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. Nahor lived ninety, no, excuse me, nine and twenty years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Tehor a hundred and nineteen years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years and begat Abram. There he is. Nahor and Haran. These now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram. That means high father. Nahor and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. There's, there's a, there's a guy going to show up. Lot is Abraham's nephew. Abram is Lot's uncle. Haran died before his father. That's. Abram's brother, he died before his father died, in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. Now, in Ur, there was a temple to the moon god. You know anybody who has the moon as their god? Sin highly developed civil civilization. People... Um, I mean, the idol was her own nation. So here Abram is coming from a people, from a group, from a city that it was founded upon the moon god. Before he met Jehovah. He's going to have a boy that's going to be the Arabians and they also have the moon god. But they don't go Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They go Abram, Hagar. Hagar's got a cow that Aaron will tell us about later. And Aaron died before his father Terah in the land of nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham. Abram's wife was Sarai. That meant contentious. Why? I don't know. And the name of Nahor's wife would be Abram's brother, his wife, sister-in-law, is Mal Milka. We'll see her later. 
the daughter of Haran. That's Abram's br brother. So not only is Milka Abram's sister-in-law, he, he is his niece. And we're going to learn later on that Sarai is also Abram's sister. We've got a pure race going on here. And some people hold oh, intermarriage and all that. For the people called Jews, yes. They're to be a pure race. When Isaac tells Jacob, he said, listen, it's time for you to go, to go get a wife. You go back to your mother's family and you get a wife from her. From them. Israel is to be a pure, set apart group of people. Hagar was the destruction by Satan to destroy that seed. So as we read on, Milka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milka, and the father of Iscal. And you can run that in a family tree. Now here's where Satan attacked. Watch. We know Matthew 1. We know Luke chapter 3. Abraham is of the line of Jesus Christ. We know a promised child of two old people that the womb is dead. According to Paul. That God said, I will give you a promised seed. That will give you to Jesus Christ. We don't know this now. Following Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We don't know what's going to happen. And Sarah was barren. And she had no child. Satan's already now attacked the line of Jesus Christ by making the woman unable to produce a child. Because if that woman of those lines, and we'll see Rachel, she'll have a problem. And we're going to see that they were barren, are in the line of Jesus Christ. We will see. Satan is trying to stop Genesis 3.15 from that seed that's going to come from that woman that's going to conquer him. As we go through Genesis now. As we go through the line of Jewish people now, I hope, Lord willing, that we will stop and see the attack of the children to prevent Jesus. How did Satan make his last attack upon the children of the Jews for Jesus? He tried to have Herod kill him by killing all the children two years and under. And when that failed, he, he got Jesus in the wilderness and on the mount and he's hungry and starving and said, Hey, come on, let's break the scriptures, Jesus. If you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all this. And then, you know, you, won't, you can stop what your mission is. And he attacks Jesus at that point. Not by children anymore, but he attacks Jesus by the children of Israel. They don't believe who he is. They want him dead. They want him gone. Mark right now, the first barren woman in the Bible is of the line of Jesus Christ. There she is, Sarai. And he said, hopefully we won't miss as we go through the Bible this time. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, grandson. So a grandson in the Bible can be a son. That will eliminate some of the people say, well, that's a contradiction. No, it's true. It's a son, son, grandson. And Sarai, his daughter-in-law, which we learn later on, is his daughter. Now watch right here. We learn later on that Sarai is Abram's brother, uh, sister, excuse me. Huh? Of another wife. Of another wife. Tara, the father, marks his daughter as his daughter-in-law by marriage is more bounding to a man than a husband and daughter relationship. You married, you married my, my son, you are my daughter-in-law. 
That's remarkable. He didn't say daughter. Marriage is bounded by God to the families. His sons, Abram's wife, also sister, we learned that. And they went forth from them, from Ur of Chaldea. They leave the moon city. And we understand that God called Terah to do this. Get out of that city. God's going to speak to Abram in chapter 12. To get out of that city and come to me. The Ur of Chaldees. To go unto the land of Cana. That's funny because that land of Cana is promised to Abram's dad. But he dies by the way. And they came unto Haran, the city, probably named for his son. Probably came to this place and I'm going to call this after my son. So here we go, naming the city after a man again. And the days of Terah were 205 years. And Terah died, Genesis 5, in Haran. You can pick it up in Hebrews 11.8. Now God spoke to Terah. Just leave. Get out. Well, this is kind of funny because when you run the ark, they have out of the ark, God spoke to Noah. He said, listen, this is the law. You can eat meat. I, I enjoy that smell, that altar, that offering you gave me. That's wonderful. I, I, I like that. That's great. And I'm going to give a bow in the sky. Noah, however he got drunk, and we don't know if it was accidental, if he knew it. We don't hear nothing from God. We don't hear nothing from God in chapter 10. The Lord comes down and sees this tower in this city, but we don't know if he spoke to anybody but himself. And the next person that we really do see God speaking, speaking to Terah, the father of Abram, which will be the father of the Jews. You realize how many gaps in time? He had a boy named Seth. Then men became to call on the Lord. We had a whole bunch of people. And then there was Enoch. After Enoch had his son, then Enoch walked with God. And he was not. He was taken. And then we had a great, great time. Then a man, Noah, found grace in the Lord's eye. Noah has his boys. They speak. They're great. Thank you. You guys can get out of that ark. Get some fresh air. I love that smell of that offering. Go out. And look how much time it is. A man shows up in Terra. He's in a moon city. And God says, get out of that city. You know what Jesus said? He said, many will go the broad way that leads into destruction. Few will go the way to straight gate. Few, Terah. And we don't even read about Terah's wife, Abraham's mother, or Abram's mother. We don't know she went. One boy dies, by the way, a brother of Abram, and then Abram's father dies. In chapter 12, God's going to tell Abram, you better separate from that family. They're going to give you trouble. And we'll pick up on that tomorrow as we will look at the foundation of Israel in the beginning of Genesis chapter 12.